further ado, help me welcome on Jenny Weaver. Jenny Weaver, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing so amazing, especially after that intro. First of all, you talk so fast, like it is supernatural. <laughs> it's amazing. I can't believe this is my sixth time on and I love all of you guys every time that I join your broadcast which I do quite often I catch your broadcast live as much as I can on YouTube your the people are just so loving they just welcome me with um just the biggest virtual hug I could ever get so thank you for having me on tonight is going to be fire I do believe that this is an assignment from Come the on. Lord like you just said when you text me Hey, you know, do you want to be on the broadcast? You guys, I am not kidding you. I was in the car with my husband and I'm just looking out the window. We had an eight hour drive and the Holy Spirit had already dropped in my spirit. He said, Isaiah's going to invite you on the broadcast. And within just a few minutes, you text me and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I actually said to my husband, I should have told you. And then I would have had proof that I really did hear from the from the Lord, but I just, you know, I just didn't say anything. And then when you you invited me on, I said, "This is a God assignment," so I'm excited about tonight. Awesome! I really believe we're in. A, this is a God time, a God moment. And tonight, I just want to say this, guys: we're raising the standard tonight, and we're pushing back yeah. against the enemy. So there will be people. I'm just going to warn you that are mad, that are frustrated, that are upset by what we're saying. But I want to tell you guys: have an open heart and an open mind. And then as we're sharing and exposing. Think about who you're defending, okay? Because if you're defending these movies and the culture and the world, the Bible says if we are friends of the world, we're enemies to God. So tonight, our assignment and our goal by God is to defend the word of God, defend practices of scripture, and ultimately to defend our children, to defend our uh -huh. home. So we're going to be extra bold tonight because we're fighting for our kids. We're fighting not only for our kids, but the next generation. And so I believe it's important to have a generational perspective and not just worry about what are we facing now? But what if we don't stand up, Jenny, what I guess I'm trying to say is what will happen to the next generation? And this was something the prophets used to say when people were tired and didn't want to fight in the Old Testament. They would say, what about your children? And the question yeah. is, what about my children? What will happen to our kids if we play church? What will happen to our kids if we put down the sword, put down the shield and play games and allow witchcraft and sorcery and demonic spirits into our home, into our children's lives through the movies that we're going to talk about some of them tonight. But it's not about just naming movies, saying that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. We're going to talk about some of the background things that are going on and what they're implying to our kids. And then at the very end, we're going to give you practical steps to being able to protect your home. So you're going to say, you guys are saying everything's bad, but what are we supposed to do then? We're going to give you practical steps at the end. Like when I mean practical, I mean every single parent can do these things to help you guys. So I want to basically set the stage by saying, I think Jenny, one of the dangers in these movies, like Turning Red, for example, which we're going to talk about, is not just the movie or not just that they're pushing, let's say like atheism. That's not the case. These movies right. are not pushing atheism. They're not saying God isn't real. What they're actually pushing is a counterfeit supernatural, a demonic realm on our kids. And they're introducing our kids to witchcraft, to magic, to a, a, a demonic agenda that is not of God. And so it's not like they're saying God isn't real, the supernatural is not real. They're actually saying it is real, but they're giving them a counterfeit demonic side and they're introducing our kids to the supernatural. And sadly, I believe the church hasn't done a good job at introducing our kids to the supernatural. So the world's like, hey, you guys don't want to do it. We're going to do it. And they are. And I believe this. If we don't teach our children to follow Christ, the world will teach them not to. So we have to like get serious about training our kids up. We, if we don't discipline them and disciple them, um, if we don't train them up, YouTube will train our kids. Their iPads yeah. will disciple them if we don't. So I, I really believe that God is raising the standard. We're seeing Jenny, the envelope pushed right now. And this is what I've been praying about saying, Lord, do you want us to talk about this? What do you want us to say? And I feel like the Lord is saying the devil's pushing the envelope to see how far he can go. And the church, instead of being the resistance, they're bowing down. Just like the Nebuchadnezzar said, everyone bow. And we're just bowing down. But we're tonight standing up. We know it's not going to be popular. We know people are going to be mad, but we are going to be the resistance. So we're not going to allow the enemy just to run over our kids. And this is where we're at. Like 
now this is the question like what is too far where's the line now in these movies the music the culture so this is what i'm seeing again we're not going against um ethnicities or cultures we're going against demonic practices this is not a racial issue this is a spiritual issue in this movie turning red which jenny's gonna just start talking about here some of her experience with what's going on um this whole thing people are saying now to defend it they're saying oh you're going against asian culture we're not going against culture we're going against demonic practices and i don't care what culture you are if your culture speaks to dead ancestors and your culture invokes demons in, I'm going to call it that practice demonic, not your culture, not your ethnicity. This is not about people. The Bible says we're not fighting people or wrestling people. We're wrestling spirits. And so tonight we are condemning demonic practices, not ethnic ethnicities or people groups. So I wanted to make that clear because I know there's a big thing going on right now of people saying this is hate speech. People are hating on our race. It's not about that. It's about defending the word of God. And there's a lot of demonic stuff going on. So Jenny, talk to us a little bit about what started all of this, this new movie. We're not the only ones mad, okay, Jenny? There's a lot of people mad. There's a lot of articles coming out against this movie. There's a lot of people saying, hey, and these some of these people are not Christian. And they're going, right. hey, uh, Pixar, Disney, you're go you've gone too far on this. There's too many suggestive themes. There's too many things here of a, a demonic agenda. And so talk to us a little bit about this movie, Jenny, and what are your thoughts on it? Oh my goodness. All of this technology in here is just all of a sudden going crazy. This I know, is this, why I'm, I'm, oh, it happens. I me turn the speaker off. It just started making the weirdest noise in the name of Jesus. Well, I just want to say that uh, if you're a parent, let us know in the chat right now. If you're a mom, let us know. If you're a dad, let us know. If you're a grandma, if you have children in your, your family that you're in charge of, let us know in the comments. We definitely want to be praying for you. But I absolutely believe that God is raising up some bold mamas and some bold dads and some grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles who will say, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm not trying to be cool, mom. I'm not trying to be your favorite person. I'm trying to save your soul from the depths of hell. And I believe that we are called to do that. Before I can just grab a microphone and go sing on a platform somewhere, my first ministry is to my husband and my child. That was the ministry that the Lord has given me. And so I take it very seriously. We are the watch keepers of our home. And so this movie, when it's coming out, has started to have a wave across the globe. I don't believe that is by mistake. I do know that the enemy will sometimes overplay his hand, which then exposes himself. And I believe this is an awakening for the body of Christ, for those that are listening. And again, I just want to second this. This is not about culture. This is not about us going against, you know, people's culture. Um, there's a movie that was, that uh, came out right before Turning Red called Encanto. And um, if I say stuff about that movie, I am not talking about Spanish culture. Y'all know I love Spanish culture. I love, I'm black, I'm white, I'm mixed, I'm interracial. So I love culture. I love unique places. I love traveling to places, but I am not going to compromise the things of the word of God for the sake of blending in Come and on. appeasing culture ever you won't find me doing it. they can take my whole entire facebook down facebook is not the reason why i'm serving the lord i'm serving the lord because he saved me he raised me he turned my life around so i just need somebody to help me in the chat because yes i'm looking i'm seeing your comments shout me down the whole entire time please and thank you but the movie turning red is so utterly shocking it well let me say it like this isaiah it should be shocking to any believer, Come on. it is shocking to non-believers, but yet we have believers who are okay with the things that are going on. How can you be okay with something the Bible says God hates? It is an abomination to him. And then you have you have the, the audacity to even go and defend it. I, we have got to wake up. And so, no, it's not about us being... Uh, too strict, too religious. No, it's not about people were calling me. I posted about it there. Karen, 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 Karen. No, no, no. It's not about that. It's about standing for what's right. And this movie, Turning Red, it is, it's come out. I mean, I can tell you what I think is happening in the movie. Isaiah, I honestly believe, and I know some of y'all are not going to understand this. I believe that that movie was sent to begin to groom our children. 
our children were being groomed by watching that movie. It is absolutely inappropriate for any child to watch that movie. And so the things that were in there were, in my opinion, as a mom, um, some of the things were absolutely disgusting. They were foul. They were introducing our children to sexual things when they shouldn't be introduced to things like twerking. They shouldn't be introduced to things like smacking their rear ends and all of these things. And, and I believe that they were being groomed by watching this movie. I believe it so much so that I actually began to study what it, grooming was. I saw that that word in the realm of the spirit groomed. And so I began to study and I actually began to find out that real groomers, people that um, attack children, abusers that focus on children, they begin to study out ways of how to actually desensitize the children into overcoming natural boundaries. That's the point of a groomer. Wow. And so they basically will do something very shocking like this movie has done very shocking and it's shocking at first and then they cause the child to trust them so much that that child feels like they can only trust this person and so that's what these movies are doing they are showing you something like hey it's just about family it's just about coming of age only this movie can understand me only this movie is sharing you know how i feel i want to tell my mom off. And so they're beginning to form this trust with the movie industry. And so they trust what comes out of Netflix and they trust what comes out of Disney and they trust what's coming out of the movie industry. And then when any Christian parent comes against that, they are actually being trained Come on. by Hollywood, by demonic forces to go, no, my parent is in the wrong. My parent is yep. overbearing. My parent is too strict. My parent is against me. They don't want me to be me. And so they're being literally brainwashed and groomed. And so then what begins to happen is these children are seeing these shocking things, rituals, sorcery of such a deep level that even adults said I couldn't even watch it. And the children are staring at it and becoming so engaged that now all of their senses are with the movie. Their physical reactions, when the girl was scared, they're scared. When the girl's heart rate started moving, their heart rate started racing. Literally pulling our children in to a place that none of us would ever want to be in in our Come lives. On. So I believe that when we're saying, hey, it's not a big deal, please get that out of your vocabulary, moms and dads. No, it is a big deal. It is a big deal because I was one of those children that was watching movies, that was seeing these imageries, which by the way, I came out of witchcraft and witches use imagery on, Jenny. to perform witchcraft. That is one of the things that witches do to get images in front of your face in front of your mind that's why those points of contact witches will give you pictures and art and all kinds of things so that there's the imagery that they use to do magic through sorcery through this is a known thing you guys and so i came out of that i was exposed to movies i was sneaking and watching things and those movies were training me in an intense boot camp training how to be a witch and i literally walked that thing out so i know what it is i'm not coming to you from just being in church my whole life i'm coming to you from being in a house come on like on that movie in canto where the house began to move and and was haunted and all of these things i came out of an actual home like that where the things wow. were in the home were moving and shaking and demons were literally walking by me like regular human beings walking by me so i know what i'm talking about if you believe this please share this video i feel the i feel the Come witness on. of the right now and so we need to be on our post we need to be mindful of what's coming through that tv all of you parents need to think of that tv as a training ground for your children mm. what are you training your kids to do now and for the rest of their lives that's so good jenny i know there's a lot of people in the chat um saying what was the movie what is it let me read this um, article about the film this is a non-biased biased article, but it gives a synopsis of what the movie was. For those of you that haven't seen it now, I just was thinking this as you're sharing, Jenny, there's 4,000 people watching. So many of the people watching are like, uh, it's not that big of a deal. You're going too far. You're this, you're that. Let's just, re let's just zoom out and remember something, guys. These are children. 
These movies we're talking about tonight, these are not movies targeted to adults. You're talking about three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds. So what I'm about to read, this is a kid's movie. This is not for 13-year-olds. This is not for 10-year-olds or 15-year-olds. So let me just, I, I wanted to say that because I think we, we don't take it so serious enough when we think about our innocent children that are being polluted by these demonic powers that are influencing people to create culture to change our kids. So here's the backdrop of the movie. This is what the article says. The backdrop to the plot is Malin's Asian family and their service as, quote, keepers of an ancestral temple in the city of Toronto. As Malin tells us, instead of honoring God, this is a quote, we honor our ancestors. So we don't honor God, we honor our ancestors. One of those ancestors was a lover of nature who dedicated her life to the animals of the forest, especially the red panda. As Malin eventually learns their ancestor, a woman, asked the gods to turn her into a red panda so she can protect the village from evil invaders. The gods granted her the wish, and since then, every female in Malin's ancestry, including her mom, has had red panda power, which is literally a demon. In the movie, you could see the demon like trying to come out of her. I mean, it's absolutely crazy, but it could only be cured by undergoing a ritual at night under a red moon. <laughs> what? Okay, so you're like, it's not a big deal. If you know anything about witchcraft, if any of you have been in the occult, you know exactly what's happening right here, okay? So she has to be cured to undergo a ritual under a red moon during which the time the red panda can be sealed in a necklace charm. I overcame it and you will too, her mom says. So she's trying to overcome the spirit and her mom's like, I've overcome it, so will you. The red panda is a magical element in turning red, but it's also symbolic and gets worse of menstrual cycle and Malin's emotions. You're being weird, one of her friends at school tells her the same morning she struggled to keep the red panda inside of her. Malin is transformed into a red panda where her emotions grow out of control, but when she's hanging out with her supportive friends, she's able to keep him in check. Some of the film's funniest moments involve Malin and her friends in um, infatuation with the five-member boy band. Of course, right? We have to add that in there. Unfortunately, those funny moments are also intercepted with problematic scenes and lines. And this is a quote from the movie. My parents called it stripper music. What's wrong with that? One of Malin's friends says, okay? Malin and her friends attend a party where they hear Destiny Child's song, Bootylicious. This is a kid's movie, guys. So get mad, please. Get mad in the chat. In the final 20 minutes of the film, we see Malin in the form of a red panda twerking over and over to defeat her mom's out of control red giant panda. Destroy her with your big butt. The, their friends cheer her on. Okay, so they're encouraging twerking, stripper music. I mean, we can go on. If you didn't get the message already, Malin is here to help. She tells her mom, I like boys. This is what Malin says to her mom at the end of the movie. I like boys. I like loud music. I like gyrating. I'm 13. Deal with it. In the film's final scene, Malin is walking out the door sporting a half human, half panda looking body with a panda tail and panda ears, but a human body. And then her mom says, you're not going to go out like that, are you? And this is her response. Are you ready for this, Jenny? This is what she says to her mom. My panda, my choice. Hold on. Has anybody ever heard that term, my body, my choice, anywhere? Is that like the slogan for abortion? Is that the slogan for LGBTQ? Is that the slogan for this agenda to make abortion normal? So she uses that slogan, my panda, my choice. My body, my choice. Uh, Malin retorts to which her mom changes her approach and then her mom approves so now the kid tells the mom what to do and again we could go an hour on this we won't but let me just finish here on this last sentence of the article the film's closing message is this girls can follow the world by dressing how they want going where they want and listening to what they want and parents should get out of the way that is the whole sentence that sums up the entire movie and it it makes my stomach turn because i'm going this is what our generation and, and then some of you in the chat now are repenting because you're like oh I, I was saying it wasn't a big deal it's just a kid's movie but we watch these movies and we allow these movies into our homes we allow our kids to watch them let me just give one more example the new buzz lightyear movie coming out i saw a preview i was like Toy Story was my favorite movie. Like, how could you get more wholesome than Toy Story, right? Like, it was my favorite movie growing up. And then the new Buzz Lightyear movie's coming out. In the movie, they have two females kissing each other. So everyone was outraged by it. So they removed it. They decided we're going to take that scene out. But then what happened? The LGBTQ community got mad. And as of yesterday, they just announced they're going to put the scene back in the movie. So yes, the new Toy Story, Buzz Lightyear, it's a spinoff of Toy Story. It's a side story. Buzz Lightyear movie will have two females kissing each other. Welcome to 2022 where anything goes. There is no line. Everything's gray. And guess what, Jenny? We're the haters.
Like, it's me and you. Right. We're the ones that are haters. We're bigots. We're um, trans, uh, transphobic. We're scared of trans people and homosexuals. Like, we're, we're just homophobic of everybody. And, you know, we're haters. All, all because we're defending our children from this demonic agenda. All because we're defending our children from Disney's agenda to brainwash our kids. I mean, I, I know that sounds so crazy to say, but is it not what's happening? Like, they just released this movie millions of kids watch and then we look at the our generation saying i don't know why kids are so rebellious jenny i don't know why kids are twerking and wearing little tiny shorts and you know i was at starbucks one day and it blew my mind i was studying years ago and there was eight-year-olds nine-year-olds and ten-year-olds in the starbucks talking about the most graphic sexual acts i've ever heard and i'm 30 and i'm going like these are eight and nine and 10 year olds after school coming to Starbucks and they're talking about stuff they're doing. I didn't even know what that was till I think I was married. I was like, what? Like some of the stuff they were saying, I didn't even know about till I was in my twenties. And this is like normal now in culture, but, but we're the ones that are bad. So I think, I think we need to get mad. I think we need to push back. If the world could get mad at the church and say, you guys are haters this, why can't we get mad at the demonic agenda that the devil is pushing? The abuse, the indoctrination, the grooming of our kids. And this is not, and I'll turn over to you in a minute, Jenny. I know I'm going here. This is not something new. Disney, and this is not a cancel Disney stream, by the way, guys, okay? This stream is not to be like, cancel Disney. This stream is to defend our kids and to protect our homes. But I will say this about Disney. And I know everybody gets mad. Disney's the golden calf. You talk about it, people just go crazy. I know. Every time I say the word Disney, people manifest and like, don't you ever say anything about Disney. But Disney is, this is a, a fact, not a suggestion, not an opinion, notorious for making movies with dysfunctional homes. You can look at a long list of Disney movies where there's no parent, there's one parent, or the parents died. And this is the main agenda. Why would that be? Why do they do that? To make dysfunctional families normal. To say it's normal not to have a dad. It's normal not to have a mom. You don't need to listen to your parents. You can do whatever you want. And this is a thing that the LGBTQ targets. They literally say, like, I'm not, it's not like a secret. They say, we want to come against the nucleus family structure. Like, the, the, the family structure, like, we don't want that. We want to come against that. We think it could be three dads or four moms or five dogs. Doesn't matter. Like, anything goes now. And so let me just name a couple, okay, where there's no parents or single parents, because I want to bring receipts. I don't just want to make all these claims. These are, just, these are just some of the movies where there's no parents, Jenny, or single parents. And we all grew up on all of these. So y'all could be like, yep, you're t Peter Pan, Sword in the Stone, The Rescuers Down Under. I loved all of these as a kid, okay? Oliver and Company. These are all movies that have no parents or only one parent or, or parents died in the movie. Oliver and Company, Beauty and the Beast, Lilo and Stitch, Dumbo, like what, why? Bambi, Jungle Book, Little Mermaid, Finding Nemo, Tarzan, Frozen, Cinderella, Tangled, Snow White, and the list goes on of movies where you can go, you guys can know your research of movies and the list I had was way longer, but I won't bore you of movies where the parents aren't there. Like you don't need your parents. You can do whatever you want. Now I'm not saying all these movies are demonic. I'm not saying all these movies don't let your kids don't do this. You gotta do whatever you feel called to do. And I'm not trying to say cancel Disney, right? But I think we need to look at this Jenny and say, why is it? Do we think that the devil's so spending so much energy and time destroying families? Why is it that God is the one that designed families, a mother and a father, a male and a female? And I know no one's preaching this online, especially with, without, you know, especially people that have 5,000 people watching. They're afraid to say all this stuff. We're not afraid. We don't care if you stay or if you go. Why is the devil targeting the family structure? It's because it's God's way. It is God's way for a male and a female to be together and to raise their kid in God. And the devil knows this. He's absolutely terrified of the Christian families in this country that will raise a standard, that will stand up. He's absolutely furious that we're on here exposing his strategies and his lies. And I think we got to get back to normalizing families again to not make it normal to not have. Now, if you're in from a broken home, you're in a broken home, this is not to throw shade on you. This is not to make you feel bad. We love you. We want to see restored. I think as the church, we need to be out adopting. We need to be out doing foster care. Growing up, we did foster care for years. We had babies in the house, all this. And my wife and I are going to do foster care. So I believe that's the answer to what we're just talking about broken families. But I don't think we should normalize broken families. I don't think we should target and say, this is how it needs to be or how it should be because God's design is for families to stay together. Divorce can't be as easy as the culture's made it. And what Disney teaches is, you don't want to listen to your parents? 
Don't worry. Your parents are wrong. You know better than they do. You don't want to have any parents? Well, it's okay because in most of our movies, the parents are dead, the parents aren't there, or something tragic happens. And so I think we're seeing that, this indoctrination you're talking about, Jenny, happening right now in our culture. Absolutely. And I just want to say this because this is another thing that the movie industry and the music industry are pushing like crazy. Guys, if you've watched TV for more than... 30 seconds, you will see this agenda every single time you put the yep. TV on. And it is to desensitize our children yep. to living an alternative lifestyle. And I came out of that. So let me just Come go on. ahead and squash this really quick. No, I am not homophobic. I literally lived as a lesbian. I came out when I met Steven, wow. he, my husband, he can testify to you. I was still like, hey, I'm still dating girls. Like, it's just what I do. And I started that when I was a teenage girl. And so that went on for years. So I know what it is to be in that lifestyle. And I know what it is to be set free and delivered by Jesus Christ. So let me speak to this because I see it from both sides. I remember um, the, when it was like a shocking thing, Isaiah, I'm way older than you. I'm 40. You're 30. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. He has still preserved me. But I remember when I would watch TV and you couldn't find anything like that. And That's I remember right. one of the first times that they had introduced on a sitcom, because back in the day it was sitcom, it was Seinfeld and it was, you know, all these different shows and friends and, and they had introduced um, Ellen as a character in a show that I was watching. And that was my first time that I ever actually saw on TV, a woman kiss another woman. And wow. I remember when that thing went viral, which that word didn't even exist back in that day. Um, and it just went all over and people were in an uproar about what just happened on TV because nothing like that had ever happened before. That was the plan of the enemy. It was to shock first and make everybody go crazy and then do it another time and another wow. time, another time. And so then by the time that I was in high school and I was starting to be completely attacked by demons in my sleep through what I was watching, I mean, it was like demons were following me. I was cutting, I was doing all these things. By that time, there was a song that came out and it hit the airwaves like it went global. And the song was, I kissed a girl and I liked it. And I yep. remember listening to it and my mom would say, I don't want you listening to that music. And so what I would do is rebel against her and I would sneak and listen to this music over and over and over and over and over and over. And I'm going to tell you this, uh, 30 minutes at Sunday school on uh, one day Come out on, of the Jenny. that wasn't enough to break that over and over and over and over boot camp of I kissed a girl and I liked it cursing. Basically it was, I felt like it was a curse that was going into my spirit. When I went to school, I was rejected by people. I automatically looked to a woman as, Oh, well maybe she'll like me. And that was it. And it was our identity. It came against my identity and who I was. And for so long, I just thought, this is who I am. And if you came against me, it was like, you hated who I was. And that's what we're seeing, this indoctrination that is happening with our kids right now. They're desensitizing the kids. They're training them. Don't you dare say anything about, it. oh, don't you hate on people? Oh, don't you be mean? No, 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 no. Listen, but this is what our Bible has laid out for us. This is what our belief is. And so how can you say not to hate on us, but yet you're hating on the very thing that we believe in. So we have to stand for truth, you guys. And here is the thing. When I began to come out of that Isaiah, I had come out of all of that music by that time. I had cut off all the, the movies. I was really starting to seek God. And I remember when it, it broke off of my life. Of course, I married my husband. We have a beautiful child, a family. I'm ministering now. That thing is broke off. And when I say God has set me free, indeed, I am free. I am free. And I can say this. There's a plan for your child. Come on. I see it in the spirit today. I was telling Isaiah this before the broadcast. I was riding all the way to Clearwater Beach, about a 40-minute drive with my husband today. And on the drive, the Lord took me into a vision. And I began to see what... 
the cartoons and what the movies would look like that were designed for children. The Lord actually allowed me to see. It was like I was in a studio and watching different clips of cartoons. And when I tell you, it broke my heart. I can't even describe what I saw. I told my husband what I saw. And the Lord was showing me that the enemy is he's in Hollywood. He is he's he's got his hand in there. That's why we need to be making Christian movies and standing up. But I began to see that this movie turning red, we will look back at this broadcast one day, Isaiah, and we will go, oh, my gosh. Remember when we thought that was bad? Remember when we thought that was shocking? And I literally saw cartoons that were designed for three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, and there were cartoons kissing and even in like sexual scenes in the bed. And I couldn't even believe it. It's basically where they just said, it's happening anyway. I heard the excuses of the parents. They're gonna know anyway, and they're gonna see it anyway. And so we're not gonna shelter. They already know what happens. And so I literally was hearing all of this chatter from the doctrine of demons, which the Bible talks about, where they are indoctrinating the people with their own doctrine. And Christians were the one helping to carry this thing out into the churches because the enemy has one thing that he says every single day, kill, steal, destroy. That's for your child. That's for your marriage. That's for the church. That's for your pastor. That's for your calling, your ministry, your assignment, kill, steal, destroy. How does he kill, steal, and destroy? He is going to use everything possible. Hear me now, y'all listen. Everything possible that your child, your family, or even you are looking at, that you are taking in, that's around you. So that's movies, that's music, that's politics, that is um, all the things in Hollywood, that social media, that I even have a list, I literally wrote it out. That's culture, that's education, that's words, relationships, different hurts, different life experiences, whatever he can use to kill, steal, and destroy and push this agenda into your life, he is going to do it. What is the agenda? I'm so glad that you asked that. The agenda is get every single person away from the fullness of God Come on. in any way possible. You want to go to prophets? No, no more prophets. We're going to have you go to mediums and we're going to have you go to psychics. And like in the movie Encanto, where they literally had one of the characters was a fortune teller. And these demonic doors that everybody had were portals into this supernatural spirit realm. And the only people that were of importance or that were held in high standard were the witches and those that had something with sorcery and then they laughed and made fun of the priest that was in the movie representing the church the one that actually had a church they laughed and made fun of him like he was disposable he was of an old time and they had moved on to newer things do you not see that this is a this is a doctrine some of you are going oh surely they're not sitting in boardrooms coming up with you know all of these things like rituals and You guys don't think that people have been planted in places by demons? Are you seriously, are you that sleep? Are you, are you totally walked to sleep that you're not awake? You don't know that the enemy has placed a hundred board members in a room to talk about how they want the person to say my panda, my choice. You don't think that they knew exactly what that was going to say. You don't think that they knew exactly what kind of message was going to go to your child, your Christian child. Yes, I'm talking to your Christian child. They're hearing that and going, oh, that sounds familiar. So that way, when they're in high school now, they're going to remember. When I was five years old, I remember my panda, my choice sounds just like my body, my choice. And since you've already groomed me to be in fornication, to twerk, to wear whatever I want, to listen to the most foul, disgusting, unclean music, you've already groomed me. Now I'm fornicating. Now I'm pregnant. The next step, take care of the baby. So now we have Come murder. On. We have every foul thing. We've got all kinds of perversion. And uh, listen, Isaiah, I could go on and on and on. This thing is deeper than what some of y'all have given it credit. And I'm not going to give the devil any glory. What we're doing is we're saying, take the veil off. Moms and dads, kids, grandmas, aunties, take the veil off and say, 
I might have thought about this wrong. I might have thought yep. that it was just an innocent thing. You think the devil is sitting in hell going, I'm just waiting on Jesus to come back. No, he is going around like a, 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 a roaring lion seeking. Can I devour that one? Can I devour that one? And then he's making his moves. And I'm telling you, I was studying the movie industry, you guys. And there's a, a article that said that the movie industry could possibly be one of the most powerful sources that we have on the earth to influence culture. Wow. It will actually establish ideologies and beliefs and cultural in society. Mm. Movies do that. Movies can actually come out and all of a sudden we think differently. Yep. I remember when the, the documentary came out, Super Size Me. We had never seen a documentary like that. And Super Size Me changed the way yep. thousands and thousands and thousands of people began to think about a simple restaurant, McDonald's, to the point where they changed things that they did because of this movie. The movie had power in it. Hitler would begin to play movies and have the movie directors create movies to help push his agenda for what he wanted to do. Movies was a huge tool in helping to shape our culture and our society. And we as Christians need to stand up and say, no, we don't participate in that. Not up in this Come house. On. It ain't going to go down like that. There is plenty of good, wholesome things for your family to watch. You don't need to sit around and watch how some young girl has demons coming in and out of her body and her third eye opened and they're chanting and she's levitating and they're literally using witchcraft actual words in the movie, you guys. Wake up. God is coming soon and he's coming back for a bride that is spotless, that is blameless, that is not compromised. I'm not sitting with the world on Saturday and then going to church on Sunday. I, I want to be on. saved every day of the week. I want to be on my post. I have a 12 year old girl in that room next door. She's counting on me to live right. She's counting on me to give her good godly wisdom. You know what I told her, Isaiah? I said, don't you watch that movie. And you know why I had to say that? I had to tell her, don't watch the movie because these devices right here, yep. they've given our kids access. We don't even yep. got to take them to the movie theaters anymore. We don't. They can get anything on their devices. And I, I let her know, you already know. Do not, whatever you do, watch that movie. And then I explained why. Yes. This is why. This is what this movie is trying to do to you. And she is prophetic. That's why we homeschooled her for, or for about eight years because we felt it was assignment for the Lord on her life, what she was allowed to be exposed to. No, we were not sheltering her. You can ask her about things in the world and she can tell you, yes, my mom's told me. We want to be able to be the ones to impart wisdom to her, the good godly way so i know it was really loud just then guys i know it was really so passionate. good it's because i believe in this and it's real it's really happening as we speak jenny i think people's eyes are being open there's one thing i want to say and, and this is going to make people mad it's okay that's what we're doing here we're exposing it Do people it. get mad when you expose their idols people always say it, and i read comment after comment when i posted we were going to do this live together and I've heard this forever in the church, the last 11 years doing ministry, you know, don't shelter your kids. And every one of you have heard this, and many of you have said this, or they're going to rebel when they become teenagers. And here's my, my response. Where is that in the Bible? Show me one place in scripture where it says, don't shelter your kids or they'll rebel when they get older. Because what my Bible says in Ephesians 6, 4 is fathers, don't provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and the instructions of the Lord. Proverbs 22, six, train up a child in the way they should go and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. But I'm looking, Jenny, and I literally Google searched it today. Where in the Bible does it say not shelter your kids? Like this is unbiblical and it's this thing of, if you don't, now I rebelled and the reason why I rebelled is because I didn't have the conviction of the Holy Ghost in my life. I didn't have the presence of God. And what happens is, let me just tell you why this happens, is you raise them in a dead, religious graveyard that you call a church that has no power no conviction no holiness no power of the holy spirit moving and then they they run off when they get older and you say i sheltered my kids and they rebelled against god no they rebelled against religion they didn't rebel against the holy ghost because you never had them in a place that's why i keep telling some of you you're in a dead stale traditional church that you've been for years that you're afraid to leave stop raising your kid in a graveyard Go find a church or start one that has the fire of God, that has the presence wow. of God. Because when I got the Holy Ghost, 
That's when everything changed. I was in a, I, I got to a place where I was like, God's not real. Like, right? Like, I don't believe. And I was raised in church. And I rebelled because to me, God wasn't real. And then when I encountered the Holy Spirit, that conviction, it changed everything. So stop with this foolishness. If I shelter my kids, they're going to rebel when they get older. No, they're going to rebel if you introduce them to religion. Because you can raise them in church and not raise them in Christ. So there's a massive difference there between that. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7 says, These commandments I give you today to be on your hearts and press them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. So God is saying, look, I'm giving you these commandments and I want you to talk about them with your kids. When you wake up, when you go to the store, when you go here, when you go there, like don't just have this compartmentalized Jesus on Sunday. And, and this idea that we shouldn't shelter our kids, who do you think, <laughs> I, I, this is a tricky question here. Who do you think started that? You think God is up there going, don't shelter your kids. Don't protect them from the world. A shelter, just Google the definition. It means protection from a storm. I want to shelter them from the storm of the culture vomiting on our generation. And I hate to even use that word, but it's graphic. And that's what the devil's doing. He's vomiting on our generation and God's called me to be the shelter. Like, what are you talking about? I had this lady write this long thing, giving Ephesians and we need to don't shelter them and let them experience it. And they have to learn and, and experience it for themselves. And they're going to miss out. I want them to miss out on depression, on anxiety, on fear, on suicide, on heartbreak. Like, I want my kids to miss out on that. I know the devil has a plan for my kids and my job as their parent, not their friend. I'm a friend second. I'm a parent first. My job is to protect them because they don't know the devil's out there trying to still kill and destroy. They don't know the devil's plan for their life. But I, according to 2 Corinthians 2.11 says we don't want to unwittingly give Satan an opening for more mischief. We're not oblivious to his sly ways. So I'm a priest of my home. I'm a guard of my home. The same way if someone broke in naturally, I would be at the door protecting them with a shotgun. The same way when these demonic spirits try to break in spiritually. It was Adam's job to protect the garden. God said, guard the garden, keep it. Now, why would I have to guard it? Because there's snakes trying to get in. There's something coming in and what did Adam do? He didn't guard the garden. He allowed himself to be deceived by the snake. And you guys think the devil's not still doing that? Like, stop thinking, oh, my kids are going to miss out if they don't go to this dance and they don't become the number one football player and cheerleader and all that. Friend, we have to wake up, dude. Like, we need a wake-up call in the body of Christ. We are so far off in delusion thinking that we're called to be like the world when God has called us to be a peculiar people. Guys, do you know what that means? I'm, I'm, I just feel it here tonight, Jenny. That literally means people are like, what is wrong with you? That's what a peculiar person, why don't you do that? Why don't you go there? Why are you so weird? That's what peculiar means. Guys, we need to wake up. We need to pray over our kids and say, man, and I've said this before, and I want you guys to hear my heart. I always say, I pray my kids have the most boring testimony ever. And this is what I mean by it. I mean, I don't want my kids to get up and say, I was like, me and you would say, Jenny, we were drugged, we were alcoholics, we were doing this, we were partying, we were this. Like, your daughter, Jenny, will never have to get up and, sh and say that. Thank God. I want her testimony to be like, I was raised in revival. That's it. <laughs> I don't have anything else. Like, if I backslide, I'm sliding back into the church because I have nothing to go back to. I've been in church my whole life. That's the testimony I want for my kids. And I believe this, the best testimony is not what God brought you out of, but what God kept you out of. So if you're in the chat like, well, I was never in the world. I don't have a powerful testimony. You have the best testimony that God kept you out of darkness, that God's keeping power was able to sustain you, was able to keep you content in the spirit. So yes, we need to protect our homes. Yes, we need to stop letting the enemy in. As you said, Jenny, movies are a powerful way that the, the powerful tool the enemy uses to shape culture, to change the way our kids see lives. Let me just say this and then I'll turn it back over to you. Um, if you look at King Nebuchadnezzar, he captures Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And if we look at what he did to them, I'm, I was studying this thinking, this is exactly what the culture is doing to our kids today. He captures these Israelite boys, brings them into Babylonian captivity, and he does three things, Jenny. He first changes their diet. 
He says, I'm going to change what you consume. No longer are you going to consume healthy things, and we could think of this spiritually, but you're going to consume the king's food, the culture's food. I and mean, this is what Satan wants for our kids. He wants them to consume the things of this world. He doesn't want them to have a diet of the word of God. He doesn't want them to have a diet of prayer. He doesn't want them to have a diet of praise and worship. He wants them to just all day long eat what their iPad's feeding them, the junk food of the culture. Number two, he changes their names. He goes, I'm going to change your identity. Is this not what the devil's doing? Is there not an identity crisis? Is this not what the LGBTQ ABCD3 is doing? Is they're teaching our kids? You're not a boy. You're not a girl. You're nothing. You're a they, them. Like you don't even have to choose. You can just be whatever you want. You, you don't want to be that. You can be, you know, Cool Ranch Doritos. If you want to identify as that. I mean, literally they're identifying like there's a company right now. It's the largest live streaming company in the entire world right now. It only does live stream. It's called Twitch, twitch.tv. One of their um, employees identifies as a deer. Like, think about this. They identify as a deer. How, how, where are we now in a culture where you could identify? Somebody say, you're being drastic. No, literally they identify. They said like, we have a staff member that identifies as a deer. So like, do they bring in hay? I mean, I'm just wondering, do they have like a, a you know, a stall at work? Like it's crazy and it's, it's laughable. It is, it's laughable. But this is the enemy changing the our children's identity. Like guys, this is happening right now. And it sounds so out there and wild, but it's literally what our kids are learning. So he changes their diet, changes their names. And then lastly, he changes their language. He trains them in the language of Babylon. Teach them the way we talk. Have them be like us. And this is what movies do. This is how you talk to your parents. I remember one time years ago, my daughter was acting all crazy with me and my wife, like talking back, just doing all this stuff that was out of the norm. And I was like, what has she been watching? So we look on her iPad at something she was watching. There's a show called Horrid Henry. Some of you probably know about this, like Horrid, H-O-R-R-I-D, Horrid Henry. This show is on, I think Netflix, I don't know, one of these sh platforms. And all he does is he's he's horrible. He's literally horrid. He's, I hate you, mommy, daddy. Like his whole persona is him being angry and mean to his parents. And the moment I saw that, I was like, I guarantee you, we delete that, we ban that. The moment she stopped watching that, her attitude, 150% different. But because that was what she was watching, it was training her in the language. So guys, what Nebuchadnezzar did to them, the devil's doing today, there's a real battle raging in the minds of people. It's unprecedented, guys. This is not a political system or humanistic agenda. There is an invisible evil genius who sits up and plans these things, directing all this, name the devil. And this is who it is. Like, why are we making this an abstract idea? This is the devil. He's an angel created by God. He's falls from his position in heaven and he inhabits the spiritual atmosphere of planet earth. The devil's not in hell. Ding, ding, ding. The devil is ruling in the air. He's walking planet earth. He's prowling, roaring like a lion, looking for food. And you know what he loves to eat? Children. Like, this is crazy. The devil loves to eat our kids. He's looking to devour something easy because he's weak and he knows that if he comes up against a Christian like you, he's going to lose. So what's he going to do? Let me go find something easy. Well, Brother Isaiah and Jenny, this whole stream is you. This isn't fair. The devil wouldn't do none of this. That's not fair for him to attack kids. Do you, do you really think the devil's fair? You think the devil's playing by the rules? 70 million babies murdered in our nation since 1973? You think the devil's up there going like, well, this isn't fair, but I'm going to... The devil don't care about fair. And until the church takes that word fair out of the vocabulary, they're gonna to continue to fight a losing battle. We have to overcome, we have more power than the devil. Take the power back. Stop letting the devil rule our kids and rule our homes. I really believe now's the time, Jenny, as you said, the church to rise up. We know that they're not gonna promote this video. We know that the, the worldly agenda hates this. We know, we know, let me just say his last thing, I'll turn it to you, Jenny. We know, let me, let me just put the elephant in the room that this is foolishness to many of you. We know that we're not like me and Jenny aren't like, you know, out of touch with reality. We know that what we're saying tonight is absolute foolishness, of course, to the world, hundred percent, but also to Christians. I'm going to tell you why the Bible says the gospel, the cross, the message of Jesus is foolishness to those that are perishing. If you think what we're saying tonight is foolishness, it's because you're perishing spiritually. You are dying. So my challenge to you is the same way you defend Disney, defend the gospel. And 
honestly, if if something's not wrong, you don't need to defend it. But why do we have to always defend things that are wrong and try to make them right because it's a children's thing? It's innocent. More the reason why we should be against these things. Now, let me let me just okay for real last thing because I'm I just feel this right here. If that movie Red Panda was not a cartoon, Jenny, let's just think about this. It was an actual movie, okay? A physical movie with like real people. It wasn't a cartoon and people were bringing spirits out of them and doing all this demonic stuff and portals were opening like in Kanto, right? Where you were talking about. If that was not a cartoon, would you let your kids watch it? No. Would you watch it? No, of course not. I'm not going to watch a movie with fortune tellers and Ouija boards. So now that it's a cartoon, it's okay. Like this is what blows my mind. We, we would never watch any of these movies if they were real action movies. But the moment they're cartoons, the entire church lines up to, to watch these movies. And we're crazy for saying it. No, you're crazy. You're crazy. It would be rated R. Absolutely. We have to set the standard in our home and we need to be aware of what's going on. Um, I think the devil knows and he's and he, from generation to generation. He's after the seed and we need to protect our seed in Jesus name. Go for it, Jenny. I'm sorry. I'm going long here. No. Um, 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 <laughs> people are like, you don't let your guests talk enough. Listen, guys, I tell my guests before, if you want to talk, <laughs> talk as long as you want. But if you don't, I'm going to tag in there as well. But yeah, I think it's really a time now to rise up the standard. Yeah. Wow. That was so good. Oh my goodness. I'm over here learning as well. Um, I just want to make this last point about movies and because I really want to hit this home as best as we can, guys, because when this is over, you're going to be faced with your family. Yep. You're going to be but tomorrow and the decisions that you're going to make that are going to last a lifetime and generations, the decisions that you're making with your kids today are generational decisions. So we need to be mindful of that. But I was doing some studying on movies and the effect that they have on us. And it's interesting because I read this article and it said that filmmakers, when they make movies, they play on something called the mirror effect. When And I actually came out of witchcraft and so I understand mirrors and the whole thing. But the mirror effect basically means is uh, like Isaiah, if I was to come up to you and I just went, you would automatically just be like, you would start yeah. smiling because yeah. I'm smiling. You know, if I came up to you with a scared face, your face would literally uh, basically match mine. Wow. It would try to scare. We do that. And so when you're watching a movie, you're not running around. You're not able just to walk away. You are locked and loaded in. And even a movie theater, it's even more intense because all other sight is blocked out. And so mm. the only thing you can really focus on are the images. And so what these filmmakers do is their design, the whole point is to get emotions out of to pull you in, to get you to be locked and loaded into what they want to put into your mind. So much so, this is so incredibly powerful that there are studies that show that people that have high blood pressure and are prone to heart attacks, they steer them away from watching horror movies because wow. it can actually trigger a heart attack while they're watching movies. That means that your brain somehow cannot tell the difference between reality and a movie. That's why when the movies, when it's, people are crying, all of a sudden you're crying. Why are you crying? You're not in the movie, wow. they're not real. Why are we laughing? Why did you just jump? Why did you get scared? I have watched movies. I have watched horror movies back in the day. That's why I had a spirit of fear so bad. Those are my, my favorite life. movies. I'm telling you. Horror movies? Yeah. That was my favorite genre of movie. It's crazy. Yeah. I watched them all the time. And Isaiah, I told this testimony and it, this was hard for me to tell, but this is real. I was so riddled with fear. I would sleep with the light on as a grown adult. And I didn't even want to get up to go to the bathroom when I was a child. I wouldn't even get up to go to the bathroom. And I literally wet the bed awake because wow. I was terrified that if I put my foot on the ground, that those same scenes that I seen in the horror movies, that they were going to come and pull me under and kill me. And, and, and it was horrific. And so what they're doing is they're pulling you in, you're jumping, your palms are sweaty. You're getting physical responses from your body, from your emotions. And they're, it's actually training you. And so what are your kids sensing? Then that, that's for adults, by the way, that's us watching movie. Imagine a five-year-old watching a little girl levitate. Imagine a wow. four-year-old watching a little girl twerk. 
Imagine wow. a three-year-old watching spirits come out of the third eye. And this is what they're experiencing. Their heart is racing. They're totally connected. The next couple days, next thing you know, you'll find your kid waving around that wand yep, and yep. pretending to do sorcery, which the Bible says is forbidden. It is an abomination and we're not to partake in it. Like, guys, either we believe the Bible or we just need to go back into the world come and on. just live how we want. We got to stop riding the fence. Even God says, I'd rather you be hot or cold because when you're lukewarm, I'm vomiting you out. I cannot stand you. It is disgusting. And so we cannot continue to ride this fence. We have to stand for what is right. Movies, there are good movies out there. There are great yes. shows, great people with good hearts that are putting out beautiful messages. I can go on with a list of incredible movies and I'm just like, wow, that thing right there, that was off the charts amazing. But we are seeing an increase of the demonic. We are seeing yep. the devil push, like you said, Isaiah, the envelope. Isaiah, it's getting worse and worse and worse. I remember when you couldn't say a cuss word on That's a regular right. show. You yep. could only see that if you had an HBO subscription. Yep. Now you can turn on and you can hear plain old cuss words. You couldn't see uh, LGBTQ, all that stuff back in the day. Now it's everywhere. It's in every show. It's an American Idol. It's on The Voice. It's on all the sitcoms. It's in the cartoons now. It is everywhere because he's pushing, he's pushing to the point where you you won't even be able to stomach TV anymore or movies yep. because it's going to be that terrible. But the good news is there is a remnant. There are a people. There are people that love God. And I believe greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. It's going to take us coming together in unity. Stop fighting each other. Stop bickering. Stop defending the world and the demonic system like yep. you are with them. If you're with them, be with them. But if you're with God... Be with God. There's a line that is being drawn in the sand. And now is the time. And do not be caught on the wrong side of the fence when the Lord comes. That's what I have to say. Get your house in order. Get your house ready. And your kids' lives, I'm telling you, they depend on it. Isaiah, I'm going to say this last thing and turn it over to you. I had somebody message me and I'm still processing how to even respond to them. And it was a Christian mom. She's in ministry. Her husband is in ministry. She might even be watching right now. And she said to me, um, help me. I don't know what to do. I looked in my daughter's phone. She's 12 years old. And my daughter's in a relationship with another little girl. And we wow. confronted my daughter. And my daughter started crying and saying, this is who she is. And we don't even know how to address her. And then they begin to look through her phone, look to see what she's watching, what she's listening to. And of course, it's yep. those kinds of movies. It's that kind of song. It's those kinds of agendas that are being pushed in her. And she just gravitated right to that. And so I just want to say this. Of course, we don't just ban people like, get out of the house. We don't, you know, we banish you. No, we need to be able to have the tough conversations. Yep. We need to be able to sit with our kids and say, hey, let me talk to you. Like, for real, for real, let's get down to business like I just did with my daughter just a little bit ago about that game Roblox. I wanted to make sure that, you know, everything that she has, that she's not communicating with strangers because old men, guys, I'm just going to be yes. honest with you. They're pretending to be little kids and they're yep. getting on these games. And I'm not just saying it's old men, it's young, it's women, it's everybody that has that perverted spirit, but they are doing these things to get to our kids. And we have to be passionate about saving our kids from darkness. Am I sheltering my daughter? You better believe I'm Come sheltering on. her with the Holy Ghost, with a fire of glory. Every day she hears tongues talking in this house. Come Every on. day she can hear prophetic worship. She can hear me and her dad discussing the things of God. She can hear us telling people, uh-uh, we don't play that. She can hear us standing for righteousness, whether we're in Publix, whether we're in Walmart, whether we're at the water park. She can see our lives lived out for God. So that way she goes, that's what's normal to me. And everything the world presents is weird and it's strange. And Come I don't on. want to part. Come on. That. Absolutely. And this is something God would always tell them when you take new land, don't follow the customs of that land. Don't just because you're in America doesn't mean you follow the customs of what Americans do. Me and Jenny, before we pray for you guys, we just want to give you quickly something to walk away with. So we're going to give you, we'll go over these quick five, 10 minutes 
seven practical steps okay and again this will not be a 30 minute 45 minute teaching this will be something for you to walk away with so if you have a notepad we're going to now give you ammunition like and we're going to make it as basic as we possibly can so that you can go over these seven steps to protecting your home and protecting your kids step number one these are very practical is being involved in your kids life being aware of what they watch, what they listen to, and what they're interested in. This is major, Jenny, because this is something we don't do. We give them an iPad, give them a movie, and we let them do whatever they want, and then we are shocked when they do something like what that lady was saying her, her daughter's doing. So I think it's very important in a practical sense that you are on their Instagram. That Listen, if your kids have Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, any social media platform, you should be at any time able to jump on and go through their messages, go through their page. Like who pays the phone? Who pays the bill? Like who's paying for the Xbox Live? You are. So don't try to be their friend. They have a bunch of friends at school. They don't need any more. Be their parent and say, I'm doing this to protect you. Now don't just do it and just for just cuz let them know I'm doing this because I'm trying to protect you you might not like it now but tell them what my mom used to tell me when you get older and you get in your own house and you can do what you want with your kids right but in this house under this roof like we need some of that old school parenting back we are so soft these days get up on their thing and look at what they're watching as you just did Jenny look at what they're playing look at what they're listening to and be involved and don't be afraid to say I don't want you doing this I don't want you going there I don't want you on this um, it's your device if they're under 18 and in your home or even over 18 if they're in your home still um, they need to go get a job but then, <laughs> then you need to be the one on their device and and monitoring don't let the devil lie to you saying oh it's you know don't be nosy they're gonna get mad at you what what is that the bible say you know only do this if your kids are happy with you and if they get mad at you there's not one verse that says if your kids get mad at you then back down you need to do this because it protects them anything i'm going to give jenny also a chance on all these points to comment do you want to comment on, on that as well i know you said you just did this with your daughter yeah i would just say one small thing is after i kind of lay down those laws and and say hey we're not going to do this or i'm not you know, no more. You can't, you can't listen to this person. I always kind of circle back around and I open up dialogue with my daughter. Like, Hey, how you, like you can just be honest and she will be honest and say, you know, I, you know, she might be crying and I would never say, Hey, wipe those tears away. You shouldn't be crying. Yep. No, I allow her to have those emotions. Like if she's like, I'm really upset. Like that really bothered me. I don't just shut her down. Like, well, it shouldn't bother you. No, no, it's okay. You're allowed to have those moments. Let's talk through it. That way she'll always feel safe coming to me, whether she has good feelings, whether she's happy with me. She says, I'm not happy with you right now, mommy. That's okay. You And I'll give her an example. And then we can move on and process it. We always leave with like, let me just hug you. Even if she doesn't want to hug, I literally will tackle her on the bed and hug her, which <laughs> makes her laugh. And <laughs> um, we have that connection where I, I allow her to talk to me because my mom didn't do that with me. That's she would good. break my head shut it down. She did it with a good heart and she meant well, but I could never come to my mom and say, Hey, I'm really struggling with this. So just try to keep that communication open as well while you're laying that law down. So good. And let me give you guys another parenting tip here. Start now. Let me just say now. this. The longer you wait to start being, uh, how do I say it? Protective over your kids spiritually, the harder it's going to be to institute some of these rules. But like for us, our big thing is because you'll say, well, how do, what about this movie that I can't, give an opinion on every single show and movie you guys send right our big thing is like witchcraft magic like we just don't do witchcraft magic is there magic in peppa pig not that i've seen so peppa pig okay you can watch this peppa you know these are things that are like it's not that you can't watch anything it's that right. there's areas that are inherently wrong witchcraft is wrong and so we're not allowing that so again guys use discretion talk to your kids i tell my kids this is why you can't watch Encanto or whatever it could be because there's magic in it and guess what all my kids know we don't watch stuff with magic We don't we know we don't argue about it. We don't ask questions. We know magic's not good We know why and so we don't talk about it So I mean we don't ask to do it So that's one thing I would say is some of you are, have 13 year olds or 14 year olds or 15 year olds It's it's harder the longer you wait So I would start talking with your kids today do it in love and use the Holy Spirit's wisdom and guidance and use discretion Okay, I'm um, number two this is huge, Jenny. Model a holy lifestyle. <laughs> Model a holy lifestyle for them to see. Do not be a stumbling block for your kids. Don't be telling your kids, oh, don't listen to that music, that music, and then you're bumping oldie love songs, and you're like listening to the same music they're listening to, but from the 70s. Guys, we have to be 
how do I say this? Uh, maintain a standard. That's how I say it. So we don't just want to tell our kids, you're not allowed to do any of these things, but then mom and dad do whatever they want. Like we talk dirty, we talk bad, we w listen to crazy music, we watch crazy movies, but you're not allowed to do it because you will be a stumbling block to them. So I would say model lifestyle of holiness. This is something me and my wife do our best. Now, let me say, I should have said this in the beginning. We are so far from perfect. We are not at all. What Even when I'm preaching, I'm going like, Lord, apply this to my life. I am not yeah. arrived. I am not perfect. Trust me, if you think my home is a Holy Spirit boot camp, you're wrong. It is not. I want it to be, and we're working at it, but we are working at it, okay? So please don't get this false illusion that Isaiah is perfect in the way I raise my kids. Believe me, there's some of you out there that are doing a hundred times better job at raising your kids than me and my wife are. And I'll be honest with saying that, but I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm working, I'm aware. And so this is a big one for me, Jenny, is living a holy lifestyle for my kids to see. This could be simple as not arguing in front of them, right? Like not being a stumbling block and letting them get confused because why is mommy and daddy always arguing about this? Or like, hey, well, if we have an argument, let's do that in the room when they're in bed. Let's talk about that later tonight. We're not gonna do these things in front of them because we don't wanna be a stumbling block to them and be, you know, giving a standard to them, but living a completely different standard. You wanna, you wanna say anything about that? I do. I have a slight difference of opinion on that very last point, but you'll probably get what I mean. So I absolutely believe that as well. And the thing about the arguing is Stephen and I have determined in our marriage and our life is we won't have like all out like private arguments that husband and wife only need to hear. But That's we good. have made a decision to let Cameron hear us disagree and work it out in a normal way so that she can problem solve and do better with coping in the outside because like i remember we were just like oh my god we have to go to the room go to the room go to the room and then i was like wait she's never going to figure out how to actually like get out of an argument when you're in someone you know have a that's disagree. good sometimes we will say um you know hey cameron we're gonna go talk in the room we'll be right back um or we will just walk in the room to I need to see you in the room. <laughs> okay. And then sometimes we'll just say, Hey, you know, I agree with that. Like, why did you, you know, we do that in front of her. And then we, we have that piece where we kind of go like, okay, that makes sense. I didn't see it that way. Okay. That makes sense now. Thanks for sharing, but this is how I felt. And then we do that in front of her, but yes, we That's need to really live a good. good godly lifestyle because they're going to, they're going to look at us and go, but you didn't do it. So that's what kids are going to do. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to call out her hypocrisy when we're compromising in our own walks. Oh. Um, okay, number three is making faith real in your home. So I, I really believe we got to do this. We got to make God real to them. God is not something that we worship for 30 minutes on Sunday. God is a part of our everyday life and teaching them this. Like faith is not something we do on Sunday. Faith is something we do every single day of the week. And God is good enough to praise every day. He's worthy enough to worship every day. He's worthy enough to pray to every day. And he's a part of our every moment of our lives. Not that you're praying all every moment, not that you're, but God is all, all, all being of everything we do. It's all about God. God is so this idea of just it's Sunday, right? We go to church on Sunday and then we don't talk about God all week long. We got to make faith real, make it real in our families, make it real in your home. And again, this is not about being perfect. Please, if you're feeling condemned, that's not what we're doing here. This is not about having prayer 24 hours a day. Again, we, me and my wife are working and struggling and going, Lord, help us to pray more, help us to read more. And I'll be the first one to say we're not doing enough and I want to do more for God. But I think Jenny making it real, like, God is real. He's really real. He could really heal. He could really deliver. And he's, he's tangible, not just this Sunday morning thing that we worship. Right. So I think that's big is uh, making it, making it real to them. That's good. I got nothing to add to that. Okay. You hit awesome. It. Okay. Number, uh, what is this? Number four is be open to talk about hard topics. Okay. Jenny, you could touch on this because my kids are young and I haven't really had to have like really hard topics with them yet. Thank the Lord. I have four girls and they're going to all be teenagers at once. So I'll, I'll circle back in 10 years and tell you guys my tips on this. But I think it's important. We talk about these things like the, not just the supernatural, but things like sexual um, sex and things of sexual matter that the school is already teaching them is talking to our kids about them, these hard areas and explain to them in a godly way. Um, what does the Bible say about it? What does God say about it? Of course, you know, you don't do that with your three-year-old, but using discretion to talk about these hard things that maybe 
maybe the previous generation was afraid to talk about or was afraid to discuss. I think we need to talk to our kids about this. And especially when it comes to the supernatural, when it comes yeah. to hell, you know, I was telling my kids about hell the other day and they're you know, young and I'm like, okay, this is what hell is. Cause they're asking, what is hell? Why do people go there? So that's a hard topic. You know, people are there burning, being tormented and people that reject God and deny God. So I think we have to be open and don't shy away from these things um, with yeah. our kids when it comes to hard topics. Absolutely. That's huge. I think we need to start doing that as early as we can without shocking them. But yeah. I mean, all there are always opportunities to talk to our children about those hard things. Even when you have a death of a family member that That's good. You know, your child saw you and your spouse going and praying with them to be healed and they passed away. That's a great opportunity for you to still explain that God is still a healing God and we don't understand everything. And, you know, all those hard topics. My daughter came to me and said, mom, what do I do? One of her friends, like Isaiah, this is like really happening right now. It's crazy yeah. to me, but little girls that she grew up with doing tea parties, she'll come to me and say, mom, you know, so-and-so says that, you know, they're, um, they're lesbian now. Like, what do I do? Like, what do I say to them? How do I address them? You know, they, they were texting and everybody was friends. And so that was a hard topic. And I had to explain to her, like, what that means biblically, how we take a stand, how we still minister the gospel. What are some cool, you know, interesting ways that you can present the gospel and still make the person feel like you didn't just threw them out, you know, and just cast them away. But we also hold that standard and we stand by that, that we're not compromising on the Bible. Um, and so, so those good. are the hard topics. And of course, in the supernatural realm, always you'll say, well, God made crystals like mom, like, why is that a bad thing? That's, a That's good. okay for my daughter to ask me. And I need to be able to explain that to her. That's really, really good. Yeah. And here's the thing I want to point out as you were saying that I thought about Jenny is they're dealing with arguments and situations that we, me and you never had to deal with. Like that would have never happened when we were kids ever, ever. was adults weren't even talking like that, let alone kids. So we have to remember that these are things that are this generation's facing and it's real. You could be all spiritual in the chat and say, my kids would never have to face that. This is real life. These kids are really dealing with this and we need to be willing to talk about it and discuss it and then show them what the Bible says. So we need to know the Bible because how are you going to show the kids if you don't know where it's at? So guys, we need to be aware of that as well. Okay. Number five, tell your story. This is actually my favorite one of all the ones that I uh, we have down. Telling them your testimony. Let them know what God has done in your life. Let them know the testimonies. The Bible says there was a generation that rose up that did not know the Lord their God or the things he did. So we need to make sure that we're always keep, keep telling our kids, hey, mommy or daddy was like this. I've told my kids before, like, hey, God changed me. God changed your mom. And again, my kids are still really young, but as they get older, I'll tell them more of my testimony. But explaining to my, to my kids, like, Daddy's not in his office playing video games. Daddy's saving the world. He's preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I'm going out on trips, my kids used to think I'm just playing in the pool in the hotels. Like, no, I'm not in the pool in the hotel. I'm out saving souls. I'm preaching the gospel. So I've explained my kids at five years old, six years old, do you know what daddy's doing? Yes. What is he doing? He's out preaching. What am I doing preaching about? I just asked my daughter, my uh, three-year-old this last night, what was I doing on my live stream? She's three. You were preaching. What was I preaching about God? What was I telling people? So we talk to our kids about God, about our story, about what our ministries are, about why we're sacrificing our family. I, we told our kids we're a special family. God has chosen us to be an end time remnant, to preach the word, to go out and do these things. And this is something my Bishop Wellington Boone taught me. He's like, tell your kids your calling let them know what god has called you to do let them know the price that you have to pay and the family's paying for this ministry and this way they don't ever despise god they're never going to despise god and say my dad was gone on the weekend or whatever because they're like no my dad was out doing something for god he's not just out playing around on the airplane he's out doing something so i would say they're never too young to share Again, of course, if you're a three-year-old, you're going to use discretion. You're not going to be like, we were out in the trap house. You know, you're going to use discretion, but sharing that God has given your dad peace and joy and love. And I would never be such a good dad like this and, or godly dad if it wasn't for God 11 years ago. So I think that's important. I need to do that more. I think we all do, but I think uh, it's invaluable, Jenny, to share our testimonies and stories with our kids. To what level have you done that with your daughter? Like, I know your daughter's older than obviously my kids. Is that something you guys have done? Or obviously she's seen your, your videos or? stuff like that yes we started that very young um, most people would probably think why would you 
be telling your daughter your your story because mine is is out there and she knew my story before social media knew my story for the church knew my story because I was able to talk one-on-one with her and so we felt because of the level of maturity that she had that it was okay so as I would begin to tell my story people would always say oh my gosh is it like your daughter they would point to her like is she okay to hear this and I'm like oh yeah she's heard it she's totally okay and my daughter loves my story. And Isaiah, the best thing was when I wrote my book in 2018, uh, The Sound of Freedom. My daughter wanted a copy of my book and she was sitting there reading my, my testimony. Even though she read my book and I was like, that is like huge That's for amazing. me. So tell the story. And that way, you know, if stuff does come out later on, that your kids don't feel like you hit, you were hiding stuff from them anyway. And so it just creates a good trust in with, that, with your family. That's so good. So guys, don't be afraid to tell testimonies, the healing power of God, the delivering power of God, make it normal at the dinner table. Okay, number six, we're almost done, guys. We're doing good here, is teach them to invite the presence of God into their lives. So our nightly prayer, this is just one way we've incorporated it, is like every night we pray, Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit. And my kids pray, fill the whole world with the Holy Spirit, right? They have more faith than me. They're like, Lord, fill everybody. But we pray this every night and it's just a way of saying okay we're going to invite the presence of God in every night we're going to acknowledge the presence of God in our lives and so teach them to invite God in their lives teach them when you're at school invite God to school with you God wants to be invited Jesus went to the wedding because they invited him that's why he made the wine that's why he did his first public miracle the Bible says he was he went and he was invited so I think God wants an invitation God wants to say Lord I invite you into my day I invite you into my school I invite you into my work like he's the Holy Spirit it's waiting on an opportunity to move and so I think that's a, a very crucial one inviting God and the presence of God and again that goes back to I guess making God known to them and making him real to them um this last one here okay number seven and then we're done here number seven build a family altar this is old school Jenny this is some old school preaching here tonight They're like what's a family uh-huh. altar these are just times of prayer devotion Bible reading sharing your faith build an altar now this is something we are trying to do intentionally and we're working at it and we're, we're doing our best we can but we need to do better being intentional about prayer being intentional about reading let me just say this I, I said this last week it was a revelation for me Jenny you never pray on accident Okay, you never worship on accident. I've never been 30 minutes into worship and been like, oh, I didn't even know I was worshiping. I didn't mean to do this. Everything we do for God is intentional. You don't fall over and you're reading the Bible, right? So if we're going to do this with our kids and build this family altar, we have to be intentional. Put it on your calendar. Say at this time on this week, we're going to pray together. We're going to read together. We're going to study whatever age they are. Have an age appropriate Bible, right? If they're young, have a Bible for kids that has questions like we do. If they're older, get them a Bible for their age and it helps them be excited about it, right? So I would say building a family altar, it's an old school message, but it is a new testament reality we need this in our homes and again I want to make sure you guys don't think I'm perfect because I'm absolutely not I want to make it clear like we're in fal- we're all fallible and I'm trying to do better I've failed t- Jenny over and over going man I wanted to have prayer tonight why didn't we and there's no excuse honestly and me going like we got busy we did stuff we did this we did that we we're out and about but I'm just trying my best to say, Lord, help me to be intentional to do this reading with my kids. You know, we'll do every day, Jenny, for six, seven days, and we're on a roll. We're like, we're hitting every day. We're doing three stories a day, and then all of a sudden, three days go by, and we're like, we haven't done our daily Bible reading. So this is not Isaiah's perfect. Please, I hope I'm not painting that, but I think the family altar is is really, really important. That's really good. And, you know, a resource that we love and use Um, You can find it on YouTube is something called visual Bible. And it actually goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and I believe they have acts as well. And it's literally someone reading the Bible, but they created an entire like movie scene to it. So it's cool. Super cool. They even do the genealogy. Like if you can imagine them going through the genealogy in a movie and they do it in such a cool way. So that's a great, uh, just resource. And then something that we've instilled in our our daughter's life is we will let her watch um, the Bible that the History Channel made, you know, that that biblical series. Um, She loves, loves that. And so at night when we go to sleep, we say we never say goodnight to the Lord. That's something we don't do in our family because we, we don't believe in saying, bye, Lord, we'll see you tomorrow. So we always say that we open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit and only the Holy and God, we're going to go to sleep and we're going to still fellowship with you. And we're going to wake up and we're going to continue to fellowship. And so we never say good night to the Lord. Um, that's just something that we just do in our family. So yeah, 
build the altar in your home. That's so good. And it was visual Bible on YouTube. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And I wanted to just to close this off and then Jenny's going to pray for all of us. And I need prayer too. I'm like, Lord, help me. I want to be a better father and a better husband. Um, and again, without the Holy Spirit, we can't do any of the stuff we're talking about tonight. This is not works based. This is all Holy Spirit led and empowered. But guys, yeah. as you walk away from this tonight, we are not saying you can't watch anything. You, if it's not a Bible movie, you can't. That's not what we're saying. What we are saying is be diligent. Do your homework, research what you're watching, look at what you're watching. And if you feel something weird spiritually, turn it off. Okay, there's a reason why there's an off button on your remote. Turn it off. We're not here to say, oh, it's only God and only uh, Bible movies. Use discretion. I, I think big time, like we said tonight, witchcraft, this this agenda in the culture right now, we need to be careful for. But where Jenny's gonna pray for us, guys, we all need this. None of us are perfect. We're not painting this illusion that we're these perfect parents. Again, trust me, we all fall short. Get back up. Don't use it as an excuse. Be better tomorrow. Be better tonight. Say, tonight we're going to start this. Don't be angry. When you get off here, don't be like, oh man, I love Disney. Now I have to throw away all my thing. That's not what we're doing. Please leave this excited, saying, okay, I'm going to be more careful. I'm going to be aware of what God is doing. Not everything. I let, let Isaiah Salivar say this. Not everything is demonic, okay? Me and Jenny don't preach that. We don't believe that, but there's a lot of things we've allowed in that we need to raise the standard against. So Jenny's going to pray for us, and then we are going to do a little bit of ending announcements, and then... um. We'll read the donation. So go ahead, Jenny, pray for us that the Lord would help us be better parents. Yeah. So I just think that everyone just on here right now, we just ask the Lord, God, if there's anything in us, Father, that has not been in alignment with you, God, we just repent of it right now. Father, we come to you and God, we ask you to search our hearts, see if there be any wicked way within us and God lead us in the path of everlasting. Father, we lay down every idol. We lay down every mindset. We lay down everything thought, every deed that has not been in alignment with your truth. God, we ask you to come and purge us tonight. God, purge our homes in the mighty name of Jesus. God, burn out anything that has not been of you, God, any way of thinking, any way of walking. And in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that the Holy Ghost would go through every room in our home that would touch every family member, every child in the mighty name of Jesus, even ones that are not even living in the home that are on the outside we decree and declare by the spirit of the living god that they shall be saved sanctified and filled with the holy ghost we come against every generational curse we break off every word curse we come against all witchcraft and sorcery every demonic attack and all demonic activity we say get out now in the name of jesus christ Father, thank you that your spirit reigns in our home. Somebody just begin to decree and declare God reigns here. The Lord is the, is the king of this home in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that you are giving us wisdom and revelation and insight from on high, how to deal with our children, what to say, when to hold our tongue, when to extend grace, when to draw the line. God, lead us, Father. We can't do a thing without you, God. We don't know which way to go, God, unless you lead us. So, Father, we acknowledge you in all of our ways, and we know that you'll now direct our path. Father, we thank you that you are protecting our children. We plead the blood of Jesus over our kids right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood over their eyes, over what they see, over yes. what they take in. We plead the blood over their hearts. We plead the blood over their ears, what they're hearing, what they're listening to. We plead the blood of Jesus over their minds, their thinking. We decree and declare they will not have anxiety. They will not have fear. They will not have depression. They will not have suicidal thoughts. In the name of Jesus, we thank your Holy Ghost that you are raising up a remnant right in our homes. In Jesus' mighty name, we say the turnaround is coming to your home today. Somebody write that. A turnaround is coming to my home today. God's turning it around. What the devil meant for evil, God will turn it around. And I thank you, God, that you will baptize our families in the Holy Ghost, God. We want to be filled to overflowing with your spirit. Less of me, God, and more of you. We say, God, be lifted up, be lifted high in Jesus' name. 
Amen. I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Jenny, I thank God for people like you. Listen, we already know guys doing this. We're going to get backlash. We know our good friend, Pastor Mike Signorelli, is under some serious backlash, some serious heat right now. We're praying for him. He'll probably do a video on it soon, but it's just been crazy. I don't know if I'm allowed to share it, but I'm going to share it anyways because I don't think he would care. But he's literally gotten, I think, 50 voicemails, I think today or yesterday, of death threats to his church. People saying that they're going to do this to him because they're angry about him coming against the turning red. So we need to pray for him as well. His stuff has gone absolutely viral of speaking out against this. So we're joining in with him tonight. We're joining in against this. We have to raise a standard. We have to push back the line. We are the resistance. So guys, tonight, so into what God is doing. Don't dine and dash. If you're new here, we basically people donate now and then we read donations. Also, Jenny, talk to us about your merch. Where can we get your merch? I have it in the comments, but you are making it. You're praying over it. She's wearing one right now. I was trying to wear my Yahweh shirt, but it was dirty. But um, Jenny, tell us a little bit about your merch store. Where else can we find you? And how can we follow you? Stuff like that. Yeah, so the easiest way is to follow me on all social media accounts at Jenny Weaver Worships. And yes, we make our shirts. They are amazing. We have a shop God bless us with. It's my husband and I's business. And so we hand press all of the shirts. Everything that you get is literally made in our shop. It's amazing. not made in the factory. And um, you get the little prayed over sticker. You get a prayer decree card every month. Um, so we send that out to you in love. And I just want to let everybody know, I am putting out content. I'm not going to be able to keep up with Isaiah and how he does content. It ain't going to happen, y'all. So don't even be looking for that. But I am putting out content on YouTube. I want to start doing more ministry. God laid it on my heart. He said that it's time to, to do as much as I possibly physically can with the hours that I can to help push out the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short and I feel that urgency. So I'm putting out more content. So I am on YouTube now and I'm posting every Subscribe. Monday. Subscribe. Subscribe. Yes. Subscribe down below, guys. Please subscribe down below. Um, YouTube is free for you guys to watch the videos. You're not paying for it. So it helps us if you subscribe, if you watch. It helps us with the algorithm. Her clothing line is linked in the comments. People are all, thank you mods. My mods are amazing. Look, they're putting her shop there. They're spamming it in the chat. Aww. Guys, pick up something on her shop. Support godly businesses. I, I really believe this, Jenny. If we could support Nike and Adidas, and I don't even know what else, because I wear pretty much my own merch and your merch only. But if we could support <laughs> all these other brands, we can support the kingdom of God. And the pricing is amazing as well. It's not like you're getting price gouged. Like their prices are incredible. So yeah. it's just great guys. Go support her. Jenny, I won't leave you on where and bore you while I read all these donations. Thank you so much. I'm going to text <laughs> you after to send you something. Thank you for being on. We'll touch base soon. Love you guys. Thank you. Bye. Take care. We love you, Jenny. God bless. Bye. Guys, what an amazing broadcast, an amazing time, another one for the books. We hovered around 5,000, which is incredible tonight. So into what God is doing, as we say all the time, don't dine and dash. You don't need to put her name in the donation because I'm going to be sending her more than you would designate for her. Let's just put it that way tonight to bless her, to honor her, and to also practice what I preach. So please sow into what God is doing, sow into what we're doing, and we're able to keep providing you this content and not having to charge for it because people like you give. So thank you. And if you can't give, don't feel bad. Don't feel pressured. Don't be, oh, I'm so sorry. This is all I have. It's not like that at all, okay? We want you to give with a joyful heart. We don't want you to be, con we're not, we're gonna twist your arm. We don't want you to feel like you have to give or there's a compulsion. The Bible says to give generously, not under pressure or compulsion. So if you wanna give, you can, but if you don't have the finances, please don't feel obligated. Don't give me your last $3. And then also if you're angry right now, cause I'm asking you to give, um, number one, go read the Bible. There's a lot about giving in it. And then number two, just stay. Don't give and stay. You can get free content. We have 650 videos on our channel, all of them for free. So we still love you. We're not one of those that are like, if you don't give, you can't. No, none of that. If you don't want to give, that's totally cool. It's totally fine. We appreciate you either way. There's no pressure. We just appreciate all of you that do, okay? So those of you that are giving, thank you. I'm going to let it load. And then if you're new, basically what we do is we put the music on, we change the backlights, and we read the donations. And I thank people personally that give on PayPal or give on Venmo. The website I will look at later. If you become a monthly partner, you do get 70 sermons, 25% off their merch store. All the partners calls, which our next one is next Thursday. So pray about becoming a monthly partner as well. It helps us out tremendously. You can do that with a QR code or the link. There's a lot of ways you can give, a lot of ways you can partner. We do appreciate it. Uh, you guys are awesome, okay? What a live stream. I agree. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Lord. Awesome numbers, too. We appreciate all of you guys giving and sowing here.
and you guys are some of you are behind in the chat and you're still typing the seven the seven practical ways all right guys we are going to read these donations now so some of you don't like this part when i read people's donations well it's not your live stream so it's okay i like to thank people for their donations and that's all i could say about it i'm not gonna apologize for it i just i like to thank people i've done this since the beginning and i'm gonna continue to do it even as things get bigger and grow we're going to keep doing it um adolf Ch uh chacon said i love your boldness and honesty keep preaching thank you thank you adolf sarah combs said kingdom come thank you sarah stephanie said overflowing blessing of heaven seed blessings of heaven seed thank you stephanie alicia k thank you so much by the way who saw my daughter come in in the beginning during jenny's talk jenny talking when jenny first started talking my daughter harvest came in and uh was in my stream and i was like trying to tell her to get out and she wasn't so i don't know if, if type one if you saw harvest in here i don't know if you guys saw her. it was it was pretty funny though that's awesome okay alina thank you so much so i thank the lord for isaiah and jenny weaver may the lord shower you both with blessings god bless you praise jesus thank you alina and then jenny's channel is down below okay a bunch of you saw it you saw it awesome i didn't know if you guys caught that down below you can find jenny's page Thank you, Alina. Said, I thank the Lord for you, Isaiah and Jenny Weaver. May the Lord shower you both with blessings. God bless you. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Alina. The ones I'm reading are from PayPal. So the, the PayPal link on the comments are these ones right here. And then I could also read the Venmo, but I can't read the website or the Zelle immediately. I have to read it off stream, okay? Don Crum, thank you so much. Pablo Felix, thank you. Said, I'm man, Isaiah, keep exposing the enemy. We have to be more aware with our children on what they watch. The enemy's after them. God bless. Thank you, Pablo Felix. Seldon's Christ King said, bless your ministries. We love you and receive your prayers. Glory to God. May the Lord continue to use you both. Thank you, Seldon's. Anonymous said, thanks for the message. I love the Lord and currently go to a dead Christian college. Please pray. I got your prayer request there. Um, said, uh, okay, I got your prayer request. Thank you. Diara Mitchell, thank you so much. Judith Landa, thank you. Cynthia Mendez, said, thank you for speaking and praying against this agenda. Such a necessity. Lord, save our children. God bless your ministry. Thank you, Cynthia. Angela Holland, so thank you both for this confirmation. God bless your ministries. Thank you, Angela. John and Lex, said, God bless you both. Thank you. Jasmine Brooks, said, thanks for this message. Heather C, said, God bless. Thank you, Heather. Uh, Lessa, said, so needed this. Thank you. Thank you, Lessa. Lucas, thank you. Anonymous, said, thanks for all that you do. Clinton Terriano, so God bless you and your family. Isaiah, awesome preaching. I got put time out today. Seems like the moderators are becoming like the TSA at the airport. Clint, what did you do? Our mods are pretty lenient, Clint. Uh, so I don't know why you got put on timeout. Were you saying something crazy in the chat? I don't know. Lindsay Miller, thank you. And maybe YouTube put you on timeout. Sometimes YouTube does that. If you type too much, YouTube will do it. Or if you say certain keywords, YouTube will time you out. So someone did get timed out recently on YouTube and I checked our thing and it wasn't our mods and it wasn't me, so. I'm not doing the fart effect, okay? So all of you asking, I'm not doing it. So you're wasting your time asking. Haiti Hernandez said, thank you, thank you, Haiti. Ellison Anderson said, great message. Thankful for you and Mama Jenny and that you both speak bully. Thank you, Ellison. Chris Rodriguez said, spiritual sniper, sniper. Thank you, Chris. Brittany Burton, thank you. Juan Martinez Jr., thank you. Mate said, this was fire. We need more of these. Thank you for doing this for God's people. Thank you, mate, matey, mate. Thank you. Liz and Rodney, thank you for the really, really generous donation. So thanks again for an amazing broadcast. We've learned so much from you uh, from you more than anyone. Keep up the good work, Isaiah. Liz and Rodney, thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. Linda Linville, thank you. Caitlin Hogu, thank you. Liam Thompson, happy to watch the live stream again. It's been a great bonus to see Jenny as well. Always really like your guys' content. Always eye-opening and instructive. Thank you, Liam. Next week is a, episode 100, so don't miss that. It's going to be awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Kelly Hale, we love you and appreciate you. She said, I feel so special. I got to hear it for the last time last night. Yes, last night was the last night you'll ever hear the fart effect as of now, unless something changes. But we're not doing the fart sound. It's funny, but I don't want that to become a thing, okay? I don't want to be known as the guy that does the fart sounds on stream, all right? And if you guys don't know what it is, it's a sound effect board that has a, 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 a fart effect. And we did it one time on accident. It was hilarious. And then we did it again. And now everyone asks to do it. And I just don't want to be that guy. Okay. It's just weird. It's gross. And that's all I'm going to say about it. So no farting on stream. All right. No fart effect. Raid soul. It's an awesome stream tonight. Crazy how demonic that movie was. God bless you and Jenny both love you, bro. Thank you, Raid. Samantha Rodriguez. I'm always blessed by your videos. I pray to see you in Chicago soon. Thank you, Samantha. Bianca Herrera said, thank you for your preaching. It really helps me uh, walk. <laughs> in my walk with Christ. Sorry, I was reading the comments. You guys are funny. 
Someone said, unless you resurrect it. You guys can pray for it to resurrect, and if it does, we'll see. Patricia Williams said, always blessed by this ministry. Tonight was fire. Keep preaching the word. Love you all. Thank you, Patricia. Melanie, thank you so much. Said, thank you both. <laughs> Everybody's laughing in the chat. Derek Chung. So Isaiah, uh, last week I prayed for Revelation. During a live stream on TikTok, I mentioned maps, and I got banned. Lost 30,000 followers. God is now leading me to expose the agenda. And then I saw your topic and knew it was from God. Praying for you. Thank you, Derek Chung. Appreciate you, man. Julio. So thank you for all you do, Isaiah. And I got your prayer request there. Thank you, Julio. Liz, thank you. Juan Barrera. said, God bless you, brother. Thank you, Juan. Yvette Perez. Thank you. Um, Leonette said, okay, I got your prayer request there. It's not a bother, Leonette. And I will pray for that after. Thank you. Malika. What is the function of an apostle? I will make a video on it soon. I'm actually going to make a video soon on are the apostles for today and I'll explain why and what they do. Yolanda H. So what a blessing to learn and get fired up for Christ. Uh, God keep you in Jesus name. Thank you, Yolanda. Vivian said, love you all. Thank you, Vivian. Excuse me, guys. I'm still a bit stuffed up here, okay? All right. Let me look at my Venmo. That was all the PayPal. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Make sure you guys subscribe to Jenny as well. When are you doing another call in? Probably Friday. Okay, Christine Saunders said, thank you so much. God bless you and your family. Thank you, Christine. Stephen King said, live stream sewing. Thank you, Stephen. Victoria G said, thank you guys for your videos. Alba Torres said, thank you for your ministry. God bless you and Jenny. Uh, Manoy Vargas. I know I probably said your name wrong, bro. I'm sorry. So thank you, brothers and sister Jenny. Bless your ministries. Thank you so much, Manoy. I hope I said that right. Karen Morenci. Thanks, Isaiah and Jenny, for exposing the truth. Praying for Mike as well as YouTube expose, was exposing so much too. Narkea Bird said, this was fire. Thank you for your boldness. God bless you and your family. John J.Y. Lee said, thank you for continually being led by the Spirit. Much blessings. Whitney Wilson said, this really blessed me. Thank you, Whitney. Joy Rogers said, vital life stream. So glad you both did this. Such wisdom. God bless me with a good job. Thank you, Joy Rogers. Takara Bell said, I watched this with my daughters. Awesome and powerful. Thank you for tonight's message. Thank you, Takara. Cynthia um, Payen said, you and Jenny were fire. Thank you, Cynthia. Henry Torres, thank you so much. Caroline, thank you. Samantha Crovetto, oh no, what happened? Samantha Crovetto, thank you. So tonight's live stream was pure fire. You and Jenny are awesome and God is using you both in a mighty way. Praise God, God bless you both, thank you. Sherelle Turner said, wish I could do more man of God. Thank you, Sherelle. Crystal Melendez, thank you. Amy Van Hooser, come on Venmo, don't do that. Said, thank you and Jenny for all that you do. Thank you and Jenny for all that you do. Edgar Nueves said, thank you for all that you do. Nina, thank you so much. Cynthia Bird said, watching Jenny's testimony almost two years ago led me to you, Isaiah, and also John Ramirez. I found them when I found you. I've been involved in the New Age stuff and didn't realize it was demonic. It changed my life. Thank you. Cynthia Bird, you know we love you and appreciate you. Alexandra Rojas, thank you. Myra Almazan, thank you, thank you, thank you. I did receive your merch. Thank you so much, uh, Myra. Appreciate you. Thank you. I did get it. Gabby Hidalgo, thank you. Christian Urzua, I got your prayer request. Thank you, bro. Austin Paps, thank you so much, bro. I said, love you, brother. Hope to see you preach again in Pasco. Keep my wife, and I got your prayer request there. Thank you so much, Austin. I appreciate you, man. Darlene Sanchez, thank you. Rachel Anderson, thank you so much. I got your thing. I appreciate you. I'm praying for you, Rachel. That was all the Venmo. Let me refresh it one more time before I read the chat. And you guys can ask me any questions about tonight or whatever. Danny, thank you so much. The thanks, love you. Danny um, Savitsky, thank you so much, man. Okay, that's all of them. I'm going to send something to Jenny right when I get off here as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, guys. Awesome, awesome. Julia Acosta, thank you. Anonymous, say God bless you. I'm learning so much. The Holy Spirit is working through your ministry. Thank you, Anonymous. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What a great night. Still 2,500 of you here. Do you have any questions about tonight? Go ahead and put them in the chat. I'm going to read the chat now. I'm trying to read all the chat, guys. I know there's a lot of people commenting, chatting, all that. So I'm trying. Can you make the background green? Yeah, I will because you asked nicely. Here you go. Asking you shall receive. There you go. What was tonight about? It was about the movie industry and how it is um, impacting our children. And when I end on Facebook, you can go watch it. And then on YouTube, you can watch it. You can rewind now if you want. What about magic stuff like Narnia and Lord of the Rings? I stay away from it. I stay away from Narnia, Lord of the Rings, all that stuff because um, I believe that witchcraft and sorcery is detestable. Guys, let me say something really clear here. I am not ignorant to the fact that my opinion is unpopular, okay? I am not dumb. I know most pastors say there's nothing wrong with Lord of the Rings. There's nothing wrong. I'm telling you what my opinion is and what my conviction is. That The fact that you listen to that or not is up to you. You can go by your own conviction. I'm not saying it's a law. I'm just telling you what I believe and what I do, but I know 
more majority of pastors leaders would laugh at me i know it's foolishness to a lot of people and i'm trust me i know that a lot of people are mad that we said anything negative about disney tonight so i am not uh i'm not out of touch with what people think trust me is your deliverance map vetted yes there's an application to get on there but at the end of the day, we have to trust people because people can obviously lie. Jared Herrera, thank you. Say, God bless you, brother. Thank you for exposing Satan's plan. You're awesome. Thank you, man. Mary Hurst, thank you. But there's a reason why a lot of you are here because you want the raw, real thing. You want the conviction. You want to live that holy life and walk in the path God's called you. So you're obviously here because you're hungry for that. I am Mexican, half Hispanic, yes. Is it Narnia related? Jesus, C.S. Lewis was a Christian, I thought. Um, yeah, he was a Christian, but I still don't I still don't agree with the, a lot of the elements that he used, so that's why I don't watch it. Anonymous, thank you. But again, that's my own conviction, so please don't take that as a law. I don't ever want my convictions to be your commandments. Let the Lord convict you as, as he would. But when I read that witchcraft, sorcery is an abomination to God, detestable, um, why would I watch it for entertainment? Drop the mic, all right? Should Christians be on TikTok? Uh, it's up to you. What is the Holy Spirit telling you? I don't like the idea that whatever I do, like whatever I'm on TikTok, that the algorithm decides what I'm going to watch. Like, why am I going to let a secular company tell me what to watch next? That's what I don't like about TikTok and why I don't sit there and scroll on it because I'm not trying to see a girl dance in a bikini. Ray, thank you. Ray said day four of telling Isaiah to grow Jerry Curl until he does. Ray, you're going to be here for a long time, brother. I appreciate you, bro. My kids are asking you to do the mouse voice. Oh, I don't have it set up tonight. I don't have my voice mod set up. It'll take me a few minutes. So I probably won't tonight. Sorry, but I love you kids. Love you guys. Friday, I'll do the mouse voice, okay? Do you do TikTok live? I don't. I've done it one time and I I, uh, I may do it again in the future, but I don't as of right now. My brother uploads my videos onto TikTok. TikTok sexualizes everything, literally. Name a trend on TikTok that's not sexual. All of them are sexual for the most part. I watched my sister change dramatically from TikTok. There is countless articles of people that have Tourette's and tics because of TikTok that literally have anxiety disorders, have literal tics from TikTok, which is mind blowing, but it's it's crazy. Do some research on it. But I just think it's destroying people's attention span and it's it's not healthy. Let's just say that. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah, I've done TikTok live before. Maybe I'll do it again, but we do upload on TikTok too. Someone said not today, Satan. A lot of comments coming in. I'm trying to read them. LM said, Jenny didn't know you were lesbian. I'm coming out of homosexuality. Praise the Lord. Awesome, LM. Mm -mm -mm. No TikTok for me, someone said. Can you make a video about holidays? I've done one on Halloween. What holiday do you want me to make a video on? Derek, um, where is Derek at? I'm sure I did, Derek. Yeah, I did, Derek Chung. I read it. I read it. How you got banned on TikTok? Yeah, thank you, Derek. I appreciate you, man. I did get it. I read it earlier. Maybe you missed it. Ray said, will you do it once I hit day 365 or I'll keep on going until Jesus comes back? Ray, I'll just be, I'll say this, bro. As of right now, I, will, I won't say never, but as of right now, I don't have any plans in the future to grow out my jerry curl or to grow out my curly hair. So that's just where it's at. So the, the chances of me growing out my hair are very, very slim. Yeah, Derek, I did get it. Thank you, man. Nate Hall, love you, man. Good night. Please make a video on the demonic Netflix, Netflix show called The Cuphead Show. Devil, uh, it's about collecting evil souls, collecting people's souls. Guys, literally there's countless videos, um, movies and shows for kids on TikTok and Netflix. I'm sorry, on Netflix and on Hulu and on all these platforms on Disney Plus that are about witchcraft and demonic. If I made videos on all of them, I would be making hundreds of videos. So that's kind of tonight why we were trying to do it in a general sense. This new video, this new movie just kind of caused an upstir uproar. Anthony Gavina, thank you so much. And the fact that the new uh, Buzz Lightyear movies, two females kissing, like that's just, why did they have to do my guy Buzz like that? I don't understand it. 
They totally ruined Buzz Lightyear. Why? Did they ask Buzz before they did that? We need hats. Oh, I'll I'll work on it. I'll work on it, okay? When people argue saying Moses and Abraham were pagans, no, they weren't. Those people you're arguing with are wrong. So there's no there's no one that I know of that would agree that's a literate Bible teacher that would say Abraham and you say Moses were pagans. Abraham and Moses were pagans. That's crazy. Do you need to go to a certain college or place to become a preacher? No, you don't. You don't. Anonymous. So I judged you when I first saw you. Now I follow your ministry. I thought to myself, I like that he doesn't judge me. And then I realized I judged you without giving you a chance. I'm sorry. You're doing amazing. Keep doing what you're doing. Anonymous, thank you. I appreciate you. I think a lot of people do judge me when they first hear me because I talk loud and fast and they're not used to hearing someone that talks loud and fast the way I do. So they automatically are like, whatever. But I appreciate you, man. This is a judgment-free zone. What, Derek, are you answering? I'm answering the one that keeps asking if his donation went through. She reacted to Jubilee's channel on progressive versus conservative Christians on scripture. I'll look at it. Abraham was called out of paganism. Someone said fact. Can you do a video on if women should be able to preach? Uh, yes, they can. Judgment free zone is this planet fitness. <laughs> no, Ray. It's just when people come in that are, uh, they don't like me or they're whatever. We don't judge them and be like, you're this, you're that. We just, they can stay. So that's why I mean it's judgment free. Thank you as for answering questions every stream. You're welcome. Derek Chung. I think, I think, uh, was it you that's asking if your donation went through? I have a, a donation from Derek Chung, and then a Derek Chung was asking if his thing went through. So, Elijah. Someone said, can you direct me to a specific place to get delivered online or anywhere in Arizona? I tried deliverance map, but I don't know. Come out here often. Trust the people you recommend. I know you come out here often. I don't know of recommendation outside of churches, Elijah. I would just hit up people on the map. I don't know specific people on the map doing deliverance there. I just know of churches. And your best bet is connecting with someone one-on-one. -on -one. Anonymous said, I'm guessing you don't watch Marvel. Will you do a video on it? I don't watch Marvel, but I probably won't do a video on it. Again, I'm not, I don't want to make a video on every single different type of movie or genre just because we'll be making a lot of videos. So, And I don't want my content to only be like, don't watch this, don't watch this, and Nick going through every single Marvel movie, every single Disney movie. You know what I mean? Isaiah, when you have a baby boy, will you name him? Uh, I don't know if I'll have a baby boy and I don't have a name picked out yet. Have you heard of the praying medic? I haven't. When is, well, let's see. Someone said, today's my birthday. Happy birthday, spiritual gangster. Have I done a video on tattoos? No, but I will. Are you ordained pastor or teacher? I'm neither. I have a uh, degree in theology and I preach regularly at my local church and I pa senior pastored for 10 years but as far as being ordained I was ordained years and years and years ago and basically getting ordained was like getting a license after you've already been driving for so many years so um I'm just being honest with you guys and this is not to throw shade at anybody what they believe I'm not big into titles I'm not big into like you have to be ordained and you have to be this and not really into all that so that's just my honest opinion I was ordained and then the church I was at, basically we thought it would be healthy for me to go to a different church and our whole ministry to move. This was like, what, eight years ago? And so when I left, I lost my ordination because I was ordained through them. But you can literally go online and get ordained in five minutes. So if that's the ordination you're talking about, um, yeah. I have serious FOMO. We love you, Cindy Ann Hobbs. Someone said females can't preach. No, 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 no. Uh, you're entitled to your own interpretation and opinion. But I know some really, really powerful female preachers. Jenny was literally preaching tonight. So anonymous, thank you so much for the donation.
Come to Alaska? Oh man, I honestly don't like the cold, man. I mean, if God sends me, I'll go anywhere. So it will have to be God. Please bring Kevin Ewing back. I have, I've invited him back on a few times and I haven't heard back from him. So I'll invite him on again though. I think I need to find another church, maybe. I gotta be at work at 4.15 a.m., but I just can't seem to let it go. We love you, Cindy Ann Hobbs. You can go to bed. Listen, you're not gonna miss anything. I'm gonna get off here in literally five minutes. So, I just feel weird if I don't stream for at least two hours when, I'm at, when it's an hour and 57 minutes. I'm like, I can't end now. <laughs> How do you witness to a demonic high priestess? Let the Holy Spirit lead you. What do you think about the book of Enoch? I haven't read it. I believe it's a historical document. That's about it. Someone's literally like, females can't preach after listening to Jenny preach for the last hour. Weird. Feels weird. Is kids sleepwalking demonic? I don't know, it probably can be, but I don't think it always is. Hi, Mariella on Facebook. I direct people to your map, YouTube, and your TikTok all the time. The map's a game changer. Thank you, Derek Chung. It is. The map is incredible. If you guys don't know what the deliverance map is, there's over 1,500 people on our website that are all over the world doing deliverance. So you can find your location, find your area, contact one of them, and you can meet up and they'll do deliverance on you. It's amazing. It's, it's just awesome. Thousands of people have been delivered through the map. All glory to God. Do you watch the movie Encounter? No. Do a show on astral projection. I have a video in September on astral projection. Type in astral projection on my channel and you'll find a video on it. What it is and why you shouldn't do it. What's your take on deja vu? I don't have one specifically. I, I don't know what it is. TV guys. The young disciples, I will look them up, okay? I'll look up the young disciples. All right, I'm gonna get off here in literally 45 seconds. Are you working on Discord? Yes, it's on my agenda. It's on my things to do this week. Love your stuff. Thank you, Leo Rodriguez. When are you coming back to North Carolina? I don't know. You're definitely my brother. Thank you so much, Hendrella. Hendrella. Sorry about the yawn. I'm sorry. Thank you, Alexandra, for posting my astral projection video. What's your opinion on guys wearing earrings or gauges? I don't have one. Do you believe in hell? Yes, of course. Guys, go get some of Jenny's merch. Thank you for giving. We love you. We appreciate you. I'll be live on Friday night, maybe with a call in, maybe a new stream. Who knows what we're going to do? We'll see what the Holy Spirit has um, for us to do. But I love you guys. Tonight was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everything. Um, Anonymous, thank you for that donation. Love you guys. I will see you guys on Friday night. Thank you for being here. Thank you that there's still 2,100 of you. I don't take it lightly. My wife is in the chat. She says good night. Love you guys. We will see you on Friday night. Be back here Friday at 6 o'clock. Become a monthly partner if you can. Support the ministry. We love you. Bye. Have a good night. Go to bed. See ya. Thank you, Jenny Weaver. You're awesome. Good night, good night, good night. You hang up first. Good night, guys. Good night, bye.